Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today I'm teaching you about how to make stickers using a Cricut cutting machine with artwork I drew in Procreate. This video is part two in a three video series where I show you different methods for making stickers using an iPad and Procreate. In the first video, I walked you through how I set up a sticker sheet and made stickers by printing them on inkjet vinyl sticker paper and cut them out by hand with scissors. And in the final video, I'll talk to you about ordering professionally printed stickers. But in this video, I'm going to show you how I created these stickers using a Cricut cutting machine. In this video, we're going to be going over getting started with the Cricut, how to make both die cut and kiss cut stickers, how to add white outlines to your stickers in Procreate, how to make full bleed stickers, cleaning up your cut lines, a fast and easy way to combine many files onto a single sticker sheet, troubleshooting problems, and much more. I'll also be sharing the pros and cons of making stickers using a Cricut and a ton of helpful tips along the way. And buckle up because this is a long video, we're going to be covering a lot of different methods, techniques, and lots more cool Cricut stuff. If you're new to Procreate, check out my Procreate for Beginners tutorial to learn the basics. And be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future tutorials. Let's jump in! So you should know that I am brand new to using a Cricut. I had a silhouette cutting machine maybe like 10 years ago that I only used occasionally. So this video will be very relatable if you're using a Cricut for the first time. You'll get to see what mistakes a newbie might encounter and what you really need to do to start making stickers. I did make a ton of mistakes, I have some advice, so please stick around for that. While I am new to the world of Cricut, I am no stranger to making custom stickers and setting up die lines. I used to do it all the time in my previous life as a custom wedding invitation designer. The machine that I purchased is the Cricut Maker. There are also other types of Cricuts. This is the more high-end model that can handle different materials. There is another popular cutting machine brand called Silhouette. And I compared the two and they do have pretty similar capabilities. I decided to go with the Cricut mainly because it seemed to be the more popular machine. If it's popular, I know there's gonna be a lot more resources out there for me if I get into trouble. And if it's popular, that means the company is actively working to develop it and support it and have lots of accessories and all kinds of stuff for it. So that's why I decided to go with the Cricut. If you're using a Cricut for the first time, there are a couple things that you'll need to do. Once you've taken it out of the package, it instructs you to go to a website where you can download the software. This software was for my Mac and not for my iPad. So what you'll actually need to do is go to the App Store and look for Cricut Design Space and download that. Once it's installed, you'll also need to set up a free account to use the software. Before we get started, I wanted to share some important Cricut tips. You'll understand the reasons behind all these tips as we go through the video and I'll explain them more. Here we go. Calibrate your machine, condition your mat, wider outlines on your sticker leave more room for error, have an air print compatible printer or you'll need a computer to print, be sure to let your sticker paper dry fully before cutting, decide if you want kiss cut or die cut and be sure to choose the appropriate settings, check that you're using the correct mat for your material, and finally, peel the mat off the paper not the paper off the mat. If all of that is really confusing, I promise it won't by the end of the video. The first type of sticker we'll make is a die cut sticker with a white outline. Now let's jump into Procreate and get our artwork set up to become a sticker. So here is the artwork that I want to create stickers out of. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the hot dog file. The first thing you'll need to do to prepare your artwork is to turn off the background go up to the layers panel and turn off the background layer. Now here are all the layers that I used to create this artwork. I need them onto a single layer. There's a really easy way to do that. With three fingers, swipe down on your screen to pull up the copy paste menu. You're going to select copy all. Then swipe down with three fingers again and tap paste. And now we have all visible layers combined into one on a separate layer. Tap and hold the checkbox to isolate that layer. That's gonna turn off visibility for all the other layers. So I'm gonna show you a really easy way to get white borders around your artwork. Go ahead and duplicate this layer that we just pasted in. Then go to the adjustments menu, 
Gaussian blur, and then choose layer. Now if you tap on the screen and drag to the right, the blur will increase. We're gonna go to about 15%. There's a blue bar at the top that shows you how blurry it's gonna get, but you don't need a lot. Now we're gonna go to the selection tool, and then down in the toolbar down here, we're gonna choose automatic. And what automatic does is it selects uh, similarly colored areas on your canvas. So we're gonna use that to select the area around this hot dog. So if you tap anywhere, you'll see that it's gonna select almost all the background in blue, and there is a little bit of a border around the artwork. Now, if we want to adjust that, let's go ahead and undo. So tap with two fingers to undo. And now tap, hold, and then slide your pencil across the screen to adjust the threshold. The black space around the artwork indicates how much of an outline there will be. I will say that this outline is a little thin. I actually ended up having some problems with my cuts that I think could have partially been avoided had I used a larger outline. When you're happy with your outline, go to the toolbar and tap invert. Now the inside of the shape is selected and not the background. Go to the layers panel and we're gonna create a new layer. Then we're gonna select white from our color wheel. Go ahead and tap that new layer and then tap fill. So that's gonna fill the area with white. Now we just need to move that layer so that it's underneath the original artwork layer and we can turn off or delete that blurry layer. We don't need that. And there you go. Now you have artwork that has a white outline around it. Now we need to save this image. Go to the actions menu, share, and we're going to export this as a PNG. The PNG file format supports a transparent background, so that's why we're using that one. And then go ahead and save the image. And that should save right into your camera roll. Okay, now we're going to use the Cricut Design Space app. So I'll go ahead and open that up, and then I'm gonna tap New Project. And to bring in my artwork, I'm going to tap Upload, and then Select from Photo Library. I'll choose my hot dog, and there's my artwork. So the first thing that the software is gonna allow you to do is adjust the image and erase any areas that you don't want. You can tap this black shape over here for a closer look. So for example, I had a little stray mark I didn't see in Procreate over here. So I'm going to use the eraser tool and erase that. And that looks much better. If I had left that, that actually would become a cut line on my final sticker, so I didn't want that. Go ahead and tap Next. So this shows us the cut line. The edge of the black shape is what's gonna be cut out. Tap the artwork in this little thumbnail to see it as an outline. If your cut lines look a little jagged or maybe too intricate, you can also smooth them using the Smooth feature. A smoother cut line will cut faster. Intricate cuts will take much longer. When you're ready, tap next. You're gonna give this artwork file a name, then tap print and cut. The other option is if you're just going to cut. Tap save. And here we have our hot dog saved and all set up as a sticker, so now we're gonna put it into a layout. Tap the artwork, then tap insert, and it will appear on the canvas. Tap the artwork to invoke a bounding box. As you resize it, there are dimensions that help you know how large this is going to print. You can also type in specific dimensions by going down here to edit and then typing in the dimension. So now I'm going to reposition this up into the top corner and I want to print multiple of the same design on one sheet. To do that, tap actions down at the bottom that's gonna bring up a toolbar and then tap duplicate. And then I can just move that over and they do snap into position, which is helpful. And then I can select both of those by just drawing over them, and then I can duplicate those. And then I'll do it a couple more times. And then I wanna check and make sure that it's all gonna fit on one page. So to do that, tap Make It. And here I can see that they're a little bit too big. They're actually gonna overflow and do it on two pages, so I'm gonna resize them a little bit. To go back, tap Canvas, then I can select all of them and then shrink them down. And now I'll tap Make It again. And now I can see that they're all fitting on one page and I actually have some extra space here, so I think I'm going to duplicate two of them one more time. So I'll just select the bottom two, duplicate, move them on down, and then I'll tap Make It. 
And this is looking great. I'm ready to print it out. You'll notice that there's a black box all the way around. This is what the Cricut machine uses as registration marks to know where the cuts are going. So it has a sensor that detects that box so it knows where to put all the different cuts. The other thing you'll notice that there is some space along the top and the side. That's because the maximum printing size is 6.75 by 9.25 inches to account for these registration marks. So you end up wasting quite a bit of paper, which is a pretty big downside for this method. So the next thing to do is go to the little print button. And this would work if you have an air print enabled printer. You just go to print and choose your printer and it should work. Unfortunately, I do not have an air print enabled printer. I have an Epson Workforce 7820 and it doesn't have air print. So I'm gonna have to do something different. Unfortunately, there's really not any other way to print this from my iPad, so I have to use my computer. So that's kind of a bummer if you don't have an air print enabled printer is you do have to use a computer to print. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to transfer things back and forth because of the Cricut software. So let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this. I'm gonna go back to the canvas. So tap canvas in the upper right. And then I'm going to tap this little disc icon and tap save. So I'm just gonna call it hot dog stickers. And then this is very important. You'll wanna choose save it to the cloud. And this will save your project file to the Cricut software cloud. <laughs> um, and so now I can go over to my computer. So on my computer, I have downloaded Cricut Design Space for Mac. So if I open that up, boom, there's my project. So that's pretty easy. I didn't have to like transfer anything over. So I'll go ahead and select that project and then click make it. Okay, and I see that same preview that I had on my iPad. So I'll go ahead and click continue. And then I'm going to choose send to printer. It's gonna bring up a print dialog box. I wanna make sure to uncheck add bleed. I'll show you that in a little bit. It's kind of a cool feature, but we're not gonna use it right now. And then I do want to select use system dialog. And then I'll go ahead and hit print. And you gotta watch out because this will pop up behind the, the window. Um, so let me pull that to the front and this is where I can adjust like my paper settings and the print quality settings and everything like that. So if you want to have control over those things, be sure to have checked that use system dialog box. And then I'll go ahead and send that to my printer. And then I'm done with my computer. I'm going to do the rest back on my iPad. So I'm printing this out and this first time around I'm using the Zakoto brand glossy sticker paper that I liked from my previous video where I did hand cut stickers. This was my favorite paper for the quality of the print and then also durability. Okay, so back in Cricut Design Space, I'm gonna go ahead and tap Make It, and then I'm gonna tap Continue down at the bottom. And then over here in the Print Options, I'm gonna choose I've Already Printed. And then you're gonna choose your material. And the material determines how like deep the blade is gonna cut, how much pressure it's gonna use, that sort of thing. So I want to create die cut stickers which means that the sticker is cut all the way through the paper, meaning through the sticker material and the paper backing, creating a standalone custom shaped sticker. So let's set it up to do that. We're gonna go to all materials. And if you wanna do die cut stickers, what you don't wanna do is choose the sticker paper setting. That's gonna make a kiss cut sticker, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but it's not what I want here. So I'm gonna choose cardstock, and the option I've been using is cardstock adhesive backed. Okay, so that's how you set up your file and get ready to cut it and print it. In theory, it should work. <laughs> In practice, I struggled with this a lot. So let's get into that. All right, so I've got my machine over here, and I've got the Cricut light grip mat that came with the machine. And one thing to know is that these mats, they when they first come out of the box, they are very, very sticky. And I actually struggled a lot with my papers not peeling off right, everything getting super stuck. So if you don't want that to happen, you'll need to condition your mat. So grab a clean t-shirt, or I'm gonna use this fabric, and just kind of like press it down all over to put a little bit of lint on it, make it a little less sticky. And then align your printout with the edges of the grid. Again, there's my printout with that black box. And I'm going to load the mat. There's two little slits on either side. 
and then press the flashing arrow button. That's going to load it in. And then as soon as the little Cricut logo button starts flashing, press that and it will start doing its thing. So I wouldn't say that the cutting took super long. I mean, as long as I would expect it to take. I've obviously sped up the video here, but it wasn't a horribly long time. All right, so it's all done. I'm gonna press the arrow button to unload the mat and I'm ready to peel off my stickers. Now, your first instinct might be to peel the paper away from the mat, but don't do that. Uh, what you wanna do is actually to peel the mat off the paper. If you don't, your paper will curl up, it might rip, it's a lot more difficult to do it that way. Trust me, I tried it, didn't turn out good. So what you wanna do is flip your mat over and bend the mat back while keeping the paper as straight as you can. And it should come off pretty cleanly. So now I've got the backing off to get the stickers off and do the same thing, turn it over and just bend the mat back so they kind of like pop off and then you can pull them the rest of the way off. So the cuts didn't come out super cleanly on all of these. Maybe I need to adjust the pressure of the blade. And you can do that in the settings right before you go to cut it. And the other thing I noticed about these is that they aren't all like uniformly cut. Some of the, the cut is a little bit off. So I tried a couple more times <laughs> and had about the same results. I also had some problems with the little rollers kind of tearing up my paper. So that, that was kind of disappointing. I was having a hard time. There's a lot of trial and error <laughs> with this for sure. So after everything was kind of not coming out very good, the cuts weren't lining up very well, I realized that there's a setting to calibrate the machine for print and cut. So I went through and did that. It took me like three or four different iterations of adjusting and reprinting and recutting and recalibrating. It's kind of a pain in the butt, uh, but eventually it started looking a little bit better. So I decided to print Another copy, this time I'm using the Ava Glossy Sticker Paper. I also really liked this paper from my last video. Again, I'm setting my material to cardstock adhesive backed. All right, so those are out. I'm gonna go ahead and peel those off again by peeling back the mat and not peeling back the paper. That came off very cleanly but the cuts are still a little inconsistent. Like some of them are kind of perfect and then some not so much. So it's hard for me to tell if it's something that I'm doing, but I feel like it should be a little more intuitive than this. I think it's just going to take a little bit more trial and error with the paper types, calibration and cutting pressure. But in any case, I wanna show you some other ways you can make stickers with the Cricut, including making full bleed stickers and setting up a kiss cut sticker sheet. So let's do that next. The next type of sticker we'll make is a full bleed die cut sticker. So the cut line will be right along the edge of the artwork. This is actually quite easy to set up. I'll also be showing you a tip for cleaning up your cut lines. Here is a balloon dog I drew with my awesome alcohol markers. I actually have a tutorial for drawing this balloon dog if you want to do it yourself. The first thing we need to do is get rid of the background. So I'll go to the layers panel. I'll turn off this illustrated background layer, and then I'll also turn off the white background layer too. And that's literally all you have to do. <laughs> uh, go to the actions menu, choose share, and then save it as a PNG to your camera roll. Next, we're gonna go to the Cricut Design Space app and start a new project. Tap upload, choose image from library, and we're going to import that balloon dog artwork. So this initial preview looks a little funky, um, but I can already tell that the edges look a little rough. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to the next screen. And here I can really see that my cut lines are very jagged looking. If I tap this thumbnail, then I can see an outline and it's even more apparent that there's some problems here. And we don't want a cut line that has all these jagged edges, especially since we're going to be doing a full bleed design where the cut is right along the edge of the artwork. So we're gonna need to fix this up. To do that, we'll go back to Procreate. 
And just by zooming in on the artwork, I can see that there are some areas where my brush, you know, kind of went over the edges. It's kind of the reality of using this type of brush, but we can fix that really easy, no problem at all. So first of all, we wanna put everything onto one layer. So I'm going to swipe down with three fingers and choose copy all. Swipe down with three fingers again and choose paste. Now I have all of my artwork on a single layer. I'm gonna tap and hold the checkbox to isolate that layer and turn off all the other layers. And then I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'll go up to the adjustments menu and choose Gaussian blur and then layer. This is a very similar process to how we set up the white outlines. Now if I tap and slide to the right, I'm gonna increase the blur to about like 5% or so. You don't really need a lot for this. And then go to the selection tool. Again, make sure that we have automatic selection enabled. And then I'm gonna tap and drag to the left or right to adjust the selection threshold. What I'm looking for here is to get the selection really close to the edges. There might even be a little bit of overlap, which is where it's kind of that golden color. That's kind of what we want here. Then I'll go to the layers panel and select the other layer, not the blurry one, just the artwork layer. Tap it and choose clear. And that's gonna clear out all that extra stuff that was around the edges. Be sure to delete the blurry layer and still make sure that all the other layers are turned off. I don't know why when I delete a layer they come back on, but make sure they're off. So now I can zoom in and I can see that the edges look a lot cleaner. I'll go ahead and export that again and go back to the Cricut Design Space. Cancel out of this. We'll import that new version of it and this looks way better. That's exactly what we're going for. So if you ever have really jagged looking cut lines, the edges of your artwork look a little rough, this is what you can do to fix that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Again, I'm gonna make sure to choose print and cut. And then I can import that to my canvas. And I think I'm going to make lots of little stickers. These are just like a couple inches, I think. And I'll go ahead and duplicate that. Select the row and go down to the edit toolbar to make sure that this row is less than 6.75 inches. Remember, that is the maximum printing width. Select the row, duplicate that, and do that a few more times until I have a whole sheet of tiny balloon dogs. Then I'll select all the copies and check down in the edit toolbar again to make sure that the height is less than 9.25 inches. And it is, so we should be good to go to print this all on one page. I'm gonna go ahead and tap Make It, and that's gonna bring up a preview of what it's gonna look like on a piece of paper. That's looking good, it's all fitting on one sheet of paper. So now I can save this project so that I can print it on my computer. So again, I'm gonna type in the name, and then I'm going to Save to the Cloud. That's gonna make sure that when I open the software on my computer, I can see this project. So over on my computer, I've got the Cricut Design Space app open, and I can open that Balloon Dog sticker file, and I'll click Make It. Then I'll click Continue, and then Send to Printer. So this is where things are a little different than before. Over here under Add Bleed, we're gonna make sure that is turned on. And what this does is it replicates kind of the color and textures of your artwork and extends that beyond where it already is. This will make a lot more sense when I show you the print. Again, I'm gonna choose the Use System dialog so I can adjust my own print settings. And then I will send it to my printer. All right, so here is the print of these balloon dogs. And if you look closely, you will see that there is blue texture added to the outside of my original art. That's called Bleed, and it was automatically generated by the Cricut software when we turned on the Bleed option. The term Bleed means to extend the image or artwork past the intended cut line to avoid having white borders. The bleed is trimmed off, leaving the final full bleed sticker with color going all the way to the edge. When you cut it, just in case the cuts don't line up exactly perfectly, you won't have little white bits showing through, you'll have little blue bits showing through. So it makes it look a little bit more seamless. So that's all done. I'm going to, of course, flip my mat over, peel the mat back. That came off really cleanly. <laughs> These little balloon dogs are so cute. Take a long time to peel off individually, but 
I think it's worth it. They're pretty darn cute. So here are all my little balloon dog stickers. They make me really happy. And as you can see, our final sticker has no white borders. It's just the artwork itself and it looks pretty great. And unfortunately, if you look up close on some of these, I still had problems with the cut lines being a little bit off. Like some of them came out really perfect, but then some of them did not and they look a little bit off. So I might have to play around with that and uh, see what I can do. But overall, I got a lot of really great stickers out of that run. And the last thing I want to show you is how to create a kiss cut sticker sheet. So if you're not familiar with the term kiss cut, what it means is that the machine is only gonna cut through the top layer of the sticker paper, so through the sticker material only, while leaving the backing paper intact. So if you think of any sticker sheet that you might buy from the store, that is a kiss cut. You're peeling the sticker off while the backing paper remains. Here is the artwork that I'm going to use for my sticker sheet. These are some doodles that I drew all on one Procreate canvas. Since these are all on one canvas, we're gonna set up the die line for all of these at once. The first thing we'll need to do is to turn off the background layer. Then I'm going to swipe down with three fingers to choose copy all, swipe down with three fingers again and choose paste. And here you can see I have everything on one layer. Tap and hold the checkbox to isolate that layer and turn off all the other layers. And then I will duplicate that layer. Go up to the adjustments menu, Gaussian blur, and then layer. And then we're going to set that to about 15%. Now I'll go over to the selection menu and again, make sure to have the automatic option enabled. Now we're gonna tap somewhere in the background area and slide across the screen to adjust the threshold and how big we want that outline to be. And as I do that, I can see that some of the objects are too close to each other and the outlines are blending together. So that tells me that I need to go back and rearrange some of these. So I'm just gonna undo everything until I'm back to that original single layer. Then I'm gonna use the transform tool to just move things around a bit. And now if I repeat that process, duplicate the layer, blur it, and use the automatic selection tool, now my outlines are looking a lot better. Remember this is going to be the shape of the sticker. So here on this pizza sticker, I need to decide if I want the area between his hand and legs to be open or closed. And I feel like the arm might like rip off on the sticker, so I'm gonna leave that closed. So once that's looking good, go down to the toolbar and tap invert. Then go to the layers menu and add a new layer. Be sure that the color is set to white. Tap the new layer and choose fill. And then move the new layer to below the artwork layer delete the blurry layer. Again, make sure that all the other layers are turned off and you're all done. So we'll go to the actions menu, share and save it as a PNG. Now we'll head over to Cricut Design Space and we will upload this image. And as we continue through, I can see that my cut lines look great. That's exactly how I wanted them to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and put it onto my canvas. Now, as I resize this, I can see the width and height here, and I wanna put two sticker sheets on one piece of paper. So I'm going to be duplicating this, and I'm gonna make sure that the width of this is less than 6.75 inches. So I'll move it up to the top corner, and then I will duplicate it. And I'm making sure to leave a little bit of room in between the two copies so that I can cut the paper in half and have two sticker sheets. I'll go down to the edit toolbar to make sure that this is less than 9.25 inches high, which it's a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna resize it down. Perfect. And then I'll tap make it. And there it is, all on one paper, perfect and ready to go. So I need to print this from my computer, so I'm gonna go back and save the project. And then I will print it out from my computer. Open up that project. Make sure to turn off the bleed setting. I'm not using that because I am using white borders. Don't use bleed if you're intending to have white borders. And I'll print that out. So for my Kiss Cut sticker sheet, I decided to use the Cricut brand printable sticker paper. 
The benefit of using Cricut branded materials is that you know the settings are going to be specifically formulated for that material and they should work perfectly. So here is the print. Uh, this paper is really thick. I was surprised when I took it out of the package, um, but it went through my printer just fine. I didn't have any problems with that, although I have heard that people do have problems with this paper sometimes, so there you go. So back in Cricut Design Space, I need to make sure that I, I set my material properly for this. Now, if I go to all materials and search for sticker, there it is, printable sticker paper in white. And the sticker paper is formulated to be a kiss cut sticker. That's what's built into the setting. So it's not gonna cut all the way through. That's why before we used cardstock and not sticker paper. I'm gonna go ahead and load that onto the mat. So when I put it onto the sticker mat, I noticed that it wasn't sticking very well. And that actually ended up being a big problem. It started sliding all over the place and I didn't notice it right away. So I ran over and undid it. And then I looked at the package to see what mat it suggested using, didn't say. So I looked it up on Cricut's website and they suggest using the standard grip mat, which luckily I had purchased. I think because this paper's so thick, it needs a stickier mat. So that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> I wish the packaging said exactly what mat you needed, but I'm glad I had it. I made sure to prime it with my cloth. So I reprinted it and the paper stuck on a lot better and I had no problem cutting it out. One thing to know about this paper is it's just paper. It's not waterproof. It's just like regular paper. So keep that in mind when you use this material. When it was done, I took it over to my paper trimmer and trimmed out the edges to make two sticker sheets. So here are my sticker sheets. When I tried to peel one of the stickers off, it kind of ripped a little bit, so that was disappointing. I've been having a hard time. And the other thing is that the cutting wasn't consistent between the two sticker sheets. Like one was a little bit more off than the other one. Some of the artwork got cut off in the cut. If any of my viewers are more experienced with the Cricut than me, maybe you can let me know what I'm doing wrong here. Sound off in the comments, folks. So you might be wondering, what if I have a lot of different artwork that I wanna combine onto one sticker sheet? Now you could go through and export each file from Procreate as a PNG, import it into Cricut, set up the die line, put it onto your canvas, do that with all of your pieces, rearrange them and make a layout. But I think that is not the most efficient way to do it and we could do it a lot faster if we set it all up in Procreate first. So if you watched my last video, I showed you how to get a lot of artwork onto one Procreate canvas at once. So that's what we're gonna do, but I'm gonna kind of go through it quickly. So here are all my pieces. I'm gonna go through each of them and turn off the background layer. Then I'm going to select all of them and share them as PNGs and save them to my camera roll. Now I'm going to create a new canvas template. I'll set the unit to inches instead of pixels and I'll set the width to 6.75 and the height to 9.25 Again, that is the maximum printing size for Cricut. So here I've got my canvas. I'm going to use split screen view to open up the Photos app. I'm going to select all four of those images and drag them onto my canvas. And now I have everything on one canvas. All that's left to do is to resize them, rearrange them, and duplicate them to fill the area. Again, be sure you're leaving enough space between each object so that there is room for white borders. And again, you don't have to do white borders if you plan on using the full bleed option, but I'm going to do white borders for these. So here it is all arranged. I'll turn off the background layer. I'm going to swipe down with three fingers, copy all, and then paste. Tap and hold the checkbox to isolate the layer. Duplicate it, and we're gonna follow the same process to add some white outlines. So we're going to blur it with Gaussian Blur. Go to the Selection tool, make sure we're using Automatic Selection and set the threshold until we have the amount of border that we want, and then tap invert. Create a new layer, fill it with white, move the layer down, and delete the blurry layer. And there we have our sticker sheet all set up. So we'll export that as a PNG and save it. Open up a new project in Cricut Design Space, import that picture, and there's our cut lines, they look great, so we'll save that. 
and we will import it to the canvas. Now when I do that, you might notice something we haven't seen before, which is down here on this little layers option, there is a warning triangle. And if we tap the triangle, it says that basically this is too big to print, which is not a big deal. We can resize it a little bit. So you'll notice if I make it smaller and let go, eventually that triangle will disappear. And now there's no warning triangle, so we should be good to go. So that's another way you could check to make sure that what you're putting in is going to fit on a page. And it fits perfectly, awesome. So again, I'm going to save the project to the cloud so that I can print it from my computer. And for these stickers, I'm using the Cricut printable vinyl. Uh, it's a vinyl material. Unfortunately, I read on the package that it says it's not washable. So that is kind of a bummer, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it out. It's a lot thinner than the printable sticker paper. So in Cricut Design Space, under materials, I'm gonna make sure to choose the printable vinyl option. This material setting will do a kiss cut, which is what I wanted to do with these, so that's great. Now I will get out my Cricut. I'm gonna go back to my light grip mat because this paper is a lot thinner. I'll load it up and I will get to cutting. That one didn't have any problems. It cut really well, actually. And here is one of the stickers. Another cool thing that you can do with a Kiss Cut sticker sheet is peel off the extra sticker material, you know, the ones that are not stickers, and that'll make it really easy to peel your stickers off later. So how do these Cricut made stickers compare to my hand cut stickers that I already made? Um, you know, they're not terribly different. Obviously the Cricut is going to have a much more consistent border. It's not hand cut, so it's gonna look a little more quote unquote perfect. But after going through all of this testing, one thing I realized is that this is a great way to make a lot of stickers in not a lot of time. And you can be really experimental and try different materials and different sizes and things like that. So if you decide you need 100 tiny balloon dog stickers on a Tuesday night, you can do that with a Cricut. So let's talk about the pros and cons of making stickers with a Cricut. Pros. You're going to get professional looking machine perfect cuts. The Cricut can handle intricate cuts, so if you want to do stickers with more intricate cut than you could do by hand, this is a great option. The software is pretty easy to use. It's pretty straightforward. I didn't really have any problems with that. You can make any size sticker up to 6.75 by 9.25. You can make a lot of stickers fairly quickly. I made a ton of stickers in just a matter of a few days as I was kind of learning all this. If you wanna print and cut a ton of tiny stickers, that's gonna be way easier than if you tried to do it by hand. And you can make stickers whenever you want. So if you decide on a whim you wanna make some stickers, you have your equipment and you can do that. And also it's actually really great for being experimental. So if you wanted to experiment with different sizes or different artwork, things like that, it's really easy to do that with a Cricut. Now let's talk about the cons. First of all, it's expensive. These machines are not cheap. This one ran me about 300 and some odd dollars. There are less expensive versions, but it is relatively expensive to get started with this. This is a big one. There's gonna be lots of trial and error. I ran into a lot of problems when I was trying to figure this all out. Um, bad cuts, you know, cuts that didn't go all the way through, paper getting stuck, trying to figure out the right setting for the material type, using the right mat. It seems like it takes a lot to figure out exactly what you wanna do and the best way to do it. So there's a lot of trial and error. Now imagine once you get it all dialed in, then you're good to go and you know exactly what to do, but there's a lot to get there. Of course, there's the extra step of setting up your outlines. You'll have to do that before you can send it over to the Cricut Design Space. And then of course, it takes a long time to set up and cut. It's not an instant process. There's a lot of steps from setting up your files, to printing, to actually going through the cutting process. So it takes a while. Now I know this was on the pros, but the print size is only 9.25 by 6.75 inches. So that's a lot of wasted paper or sticker material that you're not using that you just have to throw away. Your printer must have air print or you're going to need a computer to print it out. If you wanna have a sticker making workflow that is exclusive to your iPad and not need a computer, your printer must have AirPrint, or you have to use a computer to print things out. 
And finally, this really isn't ideal for very high volume. Yes, you can make a lot of stickers, but if you're going for like hundreds and hundreds of stickers, this probably is not the best option for that. So wrapping up, I did experience a lot of frustration with the Cricut. I expected to open the box and just be able to make some stickers, but that was not my experience. It was not really very intuitive and I had to do a lot of research to figure everything out. But I did also have a lot of fun too. When the stickers came out well, it was really exciting and felt a little magical. When all is said and done, I made a bunch of stickers that I'm really proud of and I'm excited to experiment more with this. So is it worth it to get a Cricut? It depends on what you're going to use it for. If you only plan on doing a bit of casual sticker making, this might not be the best method. If you're wanting to make stickers for a business to sell, it might also be a better idea to invest that 300 some odd dollars in outsourcing your sticker printing and getting professionally printed stickers so that you can get back to making art. But if you plan on doing a bunch of other crafty things with the Cricut, like I plan on doing, then it might not be a bad idea. You'll have to decide for yourself on that one. I hope this video helped you learn how to create lots of different kinds of stickers using a Cricut and decide if this is the best method for you. In my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to order professionally printed stickers. And don't forget to check out my last video where I showed you how to print stickers and cut them out by hand. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Lisa Bardo and I teach people how to find their creativity through drawing on the iPad. I'm the owner of Bardo Brush, one of the leading brush creators for Procreate. If you'd like to support me, I hope you'll take a look at my premium brush sets that inspire creativity at bardobrush.com. I also run the Making Art Every Day Challenge. This tutorial is actually a part of our Make Stuff May, a whole month dedicated to making things with your art. Learn more at bardobrush.com slash join M-A-E. Thanks and happy art making! If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Have a great day.